Hey, it's Mike here, and today, the mysterious vaping disease and how it just got a lot less mysterious. The CDC very recently got the results from samples that were taken from lung fluid of a few of the victims, and they have a culprit. So we're gonna do a deeper than usual dive into this guilty ingredient, and I'm also gonna present my hypothesis as a master's in public health student as to the mechanism, the molecular cause of this disease. And I haven't seen any other specific theories put out there, so I'm really excited to share mine, so let's inhale some information, breathe in some research. Okay, I'll, I'll, let's just go. The first new development that many people are not aware of with this new mysterious vaping disease that has now actually affected 1,500 people is that they now have a name for it. It is E-V-A-L-I, which I'm just gonna call Ivali. It stands for e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury. Ivali, not to be confused with the recent Hindu Diwali celebration, which let's just say is a lot more fun than this disease. <laughs> And that lung injury they're talking about is what you are seeing as those spots on those famous scans. I just found x-ray images of a person who has the new mysterious disease associated with vaping. Here's a normal chest x-ray for reference. These kind of dark areas are your lungs. This is the chest x-ray of the person who has the new mysterious disease associated with vaping. Again, normal lung tissue should be dark like that. The rest of the lungs are completely whited out on both sides. And the death count from this is now up around 35, which is absolutely no joke. So what are the symptoms for this? Well, of course you have respiratory symptoms such as cough, chest pain, and shortness of breath, but you also have gastrointestinal symptoms such as abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and even diarrhea. And while vaping is associated with young people and a lot of young people are really afraid of this disease, actually the average age of death is up around 53 years old probably just because of the resiliency of an older versus younger person. And perhaps the biggest myth about this disease is that it only comes from vaping THC, but a recent CDC sample found that 18% of people with this disease had no THC in their system at all, yet 60% had nicotine in their system. So this happens in people that don't appear to vape THC, so we can pretty much rule out THC as the cause, which some people were skeptical about at first. So it's pretty clear that it had to be some vaping specific additive and so let's just get right into it, get into the CDC's findings. Well, they took the lung fluid samples of 62 individuals from 10 different states. They looked at all sorts of things that can be in e-cigarettes like plant oils, petroleum products, MCT oil, and terpenes, which are also from plants. The result, the samples had one ingredient in common in all cases, and that was vitamin E acetate, also known as alpha tocopheryl acetate. Directly from the CDC quote, these findings provide direct evidence of vitamin E acetate as the primary site of injury within the lungs. However, they emphasize that causation has not yet been established, but I feel like it's very, very likely that this is the cause. I mean, it's possible that it requires some reaction to be so damaging, and we'll talk about that with my theory in a little bit, but it was found in the library with the candlestick. It is the murderer. It was in 100% of the samples with the disease. One of the CDC doctors even described it as enormously sticky within the lungs. Finally, the CDC mentions that there has been research showing inhalation of this vitamin E acetate damaging the lungs. However, I did an exhaustive search and did not find this particular study. I'm talking PubMed searching every possible chemical name for this and lung damage for a while and found nothing. But all that research did yield some interesting results which eventually led to my theory, but this first study I found had nothing to do with my theory, which is kind of interesting anyway, that aerosolized vitamin E actually helped with lung damage when smoke was inhaled, but the study was on sheep. So it helped, and remember, this is vitamin E. It's an antioxidant at room temperature after all, but aerosolized is just tiny droplets in the air. But in vaping devices, it is vaporized with heat, and so the hotter that vitamin E gets, the more damaging it appears that it could be. This could be the first clue, because it's important to note that THC, which was most of the cases, is actually vaped at a higher temperature range. We're talking 280 degrees to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, while tobacco vapes are down around 250 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, so maybe 300 degrees is the danger zone, or maybe some people are vaping nicotine too high, or they're using crappy vapes that burn too hot, and the temperature danger zone is actually even higher. So what happens when you heat this stuff up and where's that cutoff point? Well, our answers might come from an unlikely place and that is food science. 
From this lengthy review of studies, vitamin E appears to remain an antioxidant, or at least have antioxidant activity in you know vegetable oils up around 300 degrees. But it appears that heating in some cases can lead to oxidization. So this antioxidant when heated can become an oxidant. Specifically that this oxidation would produce free radicals which are notorious for damaging human tissue, causing cancer and aging. And from this study, vitamin E, that alpha tocopherol in certain olive oil can be destroyed quite rapidly at 170 degrees Celsius or 338 degrees Fahrenheit. And here is an entire study on the pro-oxidant activity of alpha tocopherol in vegetable oils. It shows that even a longer period of time at just 130 degrees Fahrenheit can cause this oxidation. So this presents two other options. Perhaps somebody just leaving their vape products in a hot car could do it, or perhaps a manufacturer of this stuff didn't leave it at room temperature, sort of mishandled it. So they were just putting oxidized vitamin E in a bunch of products. So my official hypothesis is that when heated up to higher temperatures of 300 to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, most commonly in THC vapes, but also sometimes in nicotine vapes, this vitamin E acetate actually oxidizes and creates an acute inflammatory response, hence these spots of inflammation on the lungs. You can hardly even see the border of the heart here. This can be associated with inflammation, fluid in the lungs, infection, bleeding, or a combination of multiple of those. In addition, that unique stickiness of this substance prevents it from being cleared out of the lungs, which continues the damage. So obviously advanced clinical studies would be the best way to determine if this is actually what's happening. But the first thing the CDC could do would be look for oxidized versions of alpha tocopherol, such as hydroperoxy tocopherone in the lung fluid. And this is really nothing new in disease. It's a reaction that's actually quite similar to what happens with colorectal cancer and heme iron. So heme iron in red meat can oxidize in the colon and actually do some DNA damage, which can increase risk of and eventually cause cancer in some people. And that's part of the reason the WHO deems red and processed meat class two and one A carcinogens. Another point worth mentioning, this isn't a reason people should be afraid of vitamin E in whole foods. No, vitamin E is in things like whole grains and vegetables, and both of those are very robustly associated with lower mortality. But I will say studies giving people high dose of vitamin E for cancer as a treatment have actually been stopped. People who were given the vitamin E had such higher rates of disease, it was actually oxidating in that situation as well, they think, and so they actually ethically had to discontinue those studies Anyway, side note, let's get back on it. Now for what I consider one of the biggest questions of all, why do they add this stuff to vaping products in the first place? Well, from our CDC deputy lady, Anne, it quote, may be done for the illicit purpose or the profit purpose of diluting the materials and making it look nice and perhaps not having to use as much THC or other active ingredients. Basically, these diseases and deaths were caused by cheapskates. The very first thing we need to do is make this additive illegal and Ohio has already banned it Go Ohio, that's awesome. We'll probably start seeing vitamin E free labels on vaping products in the future, but there could be another culprit lurking in the shadows. But you know what definitely is a culprit for damaging your lungs? Actual smoke as well. One thing's for sure, this vaping disease should never be used as an excuse to actually go back to smoking cigarettes or for some reason start smoking cigarettes. To put it in perspective, more people are killed every single day from smoking cigarettes than have contracted this mysterious vaping disease at all ever. Not deaths from the vaping disease, just getting the disease. If this product is properly regulated, it will definitely be way safer than smoking actual cigarettes, but of course not as safe as not doing either. But in the end, I believe that it was the oxidation of vitamin E acetate from heating it to high temperatures that has led to this disease. And that's it. So feel free to share this, to spread the awareness if you want to. Also, let me know what you think down below about all of this. Feel free to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, and or diarrhea.